Hello everyone, welcome to Achievers Academy. Today, we will be discussing the complete detailed analysis of interim budget 2024. So this is a part 1, then we will have the part 2, then if at all something is left that will be covered in the part 3. Along with this, once the detailed analysis of budget is over, when I am talking about detail, you have to understand that I am going into very in-depth okay, understanding of the budget. The complete uh, allocations, whether they have increased or decreased, we will talk about the schemes and its features and the allocations given to it. And we will also see that what kind of topics that we are going to cover for sure. So once the budget is done in two or three parts, then we will do the MCQs on the budget, which is close to 100. So once you are done with this, at least for three, four months, okay, till the election year, Okay, I guess the in during the election, if the BJP comes to power also, the numbers might not change. New policies uh, will be introduced by the government, nothing more than that. This all will remain same. There won't be any kind of revision in most of the estimates. Okay, so make sure that this budget is a very primary budget to have a clear understanding of the budget that will be presented in January 20, uh, July 2024. Let us go ahead. Okay. So here you can see we are having some, uh, I have given the flow of lecture. The flow of lecture is like, like this, all about Nirmala Sita Raman Madam. Some important facts with regard to the budget that she has presented. Then we will talk about who said what. Means after the budget was presented, Prime Minister Modi comment on the budget. Amit Shah comment on the budget, Rahul Gandhi comment on the budget. So we'll see the important dignitaries of our country, who are, what they have said with regard to the budget. We'll talk about it. Then we'll talk about expenditure budget. This will be like uh, covered in the next part. Then we'll talk about vision of vision for Viksit Bharat. What does it mean? What is a vision? Some important points are given by the government uh, to uh, make us understand what is the meaning of Viksit Bharat from their perspective. Then we'll talk about a brief evolution of budget. Then we'll talk about 10 major announcement of budget. Okay. Then we'll also see what are the guiding factors that has been enshrined by the Nirmala Madam during the presentation of the budget. And at the end, we'll also see that Nirmala Madam, while presenting the budget speech, she has also listed out some achievements. That important achievements, five and six achievements she has listed during the presentation of the speech. Okay, budget speech, we have to see that. So this is a qualitative understanding of the budget. The numbers, the schemes, the allocation will be covered in the part two. But you have to know about this because they may ask you in the examination, which among the following is not a vision of the budget 2024? They may ask you like that. Which among the following does not encompass Viksit Bharat? Okay, like that a question may come. So it is important that you concentrate on qualitative data of the budget and also quantitative data of the budget. Let us start our lecture. Okay. So the first and foremost person who is important to all of us is Prime Minister Modi ji. Okay. What does he said? He said that PM Modi on the budget, budget strengthens foundation of Viksit Bharat. And here very important here is given my dear students. Remember this point here. Viksit Bharat we want to achieve by which year? By 2047. What is the meaning of Viksit Bharat? Viksit is nothing but developed. So government vision is to develop our India by, 20, by 2047. As you know that when you are also child, when I was also in the school, when you are also in the school, we have been learning about this sentence, right or wrong? We always say that India is a developing country. India is a developing country. For 75 years, this is the same notions mentioned in our textbooks. And that is how we have learned. Now the government want this tag to be changed into what? From developing to develop means your generation to come forward and my generation to come forward in the future. They should be reading about India is a developed country. Okay. The foundations of this developed country according to the government has been laid and they are expecting that by 2047 we will have a developed country. That is only called as Viksit Bharat. Okay. And Modi ji said that the budget presented is a reflection of India's youth. So now you can directly understand that the budget has given importance for four important uh, caste. And in that, uh, they're not talking about Shudras, they're not talking about Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. Remember this point. 
then the new forecast given by the PM Modi you can write in the comment section we do have the discussion for sure I'll tell you give a hint like Garib is there okay second one is Mahilaye is there third one is youth is there so three I have given you fourth one you write in the comment section that will be covered in the part two some kind of exercise you have to do by yourself so that you should get engaged into the lectures okay so budget strengthen the foundation of Exit Bharat by 2047 you may get a MCQ that the government aiming uh, the goal to achieve the Vixit Bharat will be by which year? Option A 2047, 2037, 2075 like that. So 2047 is your answer and Modiji said that whatever the budget presented by the Nirvana Madan, it reflects the development of youth more. Okay. After that the next important person that we are having is okay, Radna Singh, one of the again a important uh, uh, person in the BJP. So he commented that calling the interim budget, defense minister at this point of time, Rajnath Singh has said that he was very confident that the economy will achieve the target of 5 trillion okay, by 2027 and more than 7 trillion by 2030. Make sure that these are the government numbers already given officially. Rajnath Singh has quoted the same numbers. Why I have picked up Rajnath Singh means this is a uh, uh, facts that you should know. So according to the government they want to achieve 5 trillion economy by 2027 this is a one MCQ and another MCQ is uh, by 2030 they have to attain uh, what 7 trillion dollar economy that is what the important points that you have to remember and uh, who minister of our country Amisha he also praises the interim budget okay and he said that the budget sheds gives light on the milestone achieved by Narendra Modi government in the last 10 years. Whatever the Modi government has done in the last 10 years, the interim budget is a reflection of the achievements of the Prime Minister Modi ji, that is what he commented. Okay, now let us see the opposition leaders who has what they have commented. Okay, Rahul Gandhi has told that it is Mitrakal budget. Okay, basically Mitrakal is nothing but it is like in future there won't be any substantive development. Okay, it is just like a missed budget. Mitrakal means missed budget. So he said that there is no, no roadmap to build India's future. That's why he is terming this particular budget as Mitrakal budget. And he said that government has no roadmap to build India's future. That is what he has commented by looking at the interim budget. And the very most important person of Congress government the head of the realm of Congress party, Mr. Malikarjun Kharge. What does he said? He said that interim budget lacks accountability and a vision. So whatever Rahul Gandhi has told that there is no vision to develop the country, Kharge also in his own words has said that there is no vision for the country. And BJP is saying that we are having a vision and vision only. Okay, Vixit Bharat, the vision itself is there by 2047, by 2027, by 2030, we are having the bigger visions. And they are saying that you don't have a vision only. So complete contradiction is there between the two major ruling parties of our country. Interim budget lacks accountability. Accountability is nothing but when you do uh, what in allocations, when you do uh, expenditure okay, from the budget, there is no accountability. Nothing but whether you will achieve that particular target, no one is going to uh, see that. Whether you will uh, definitely spend that amount of money uh, on a particular activity, no one is going to see that. If you fail, there, will, there is no accountability also. So Kharge said that you don't have accountability of this budget, nor you have a vision to develop our country. These are the important uh, comments made by the political leaders. Let us go ahead. Okay. Let us talk about Nirmala Sitaraman, madam. Okay. The budget which she presented on February 1st of 2024, it was the shortest budget in the history of budget presentation. It lasted only for 56 minutes. It lasted only for what? 56 minutes. Remember this point. And one more important fact is also there. She not only delivered the shortest budget, okay, with respect to time, but she also delivered the longest budget. In 2020, her budget speech was at more than 2 hours 40 minutes. It's almost like 3 hours of budget speech she has given in 2020 during the COVID period. And this year, 2024, she has given the shortest uh, budget speech. Okay, that is a distinction she is having. Not only that, 
she she is at this point of time india's first full time women finance minister first full time women finance minister okay because uh, indira gandhi ji was the first woman finance minister of our country but indira gandhi ji did not work for 5 years as a finance minister so that's why nirmala madam became the first full time full time woman finance minister of the country but obviously she is the second woman finance minister because indira gandhi ji was the first finance minister and nirmala madam was the second finance minister woman finance minister okay in her budget speech nirmala sitaraman has coined a new expansion of fdi now fdi does not mean foreign direct investment she has given a new connotation to this particular fdi and she calls fdi as first developed india f d i okay and for gdp also she has coined a new term called as gdp governance development and performance g means governance governance is nothing but how we govern the people how we deliver the services to the people that is called as governance then we are having development our intention government intention is to develop the country to do the investment in the productive assets and areas and also performance so we not only do the allocation we also look after whether we are performing in a particular activity or not for the development of women for the development of child for the development of senior citizens for the development of youth etc so and so forth okay so important facts very important in 2019 you can see that she uh, before the congress government has the finance minister as pranab da pranab mukherjee was there okay our ex president also he is not there uh, with us at this point of time he died okay she uh, he used to carry a uh, leather briefcase okay in that leather briefcase all budget documents used to be there okay budget is derived you remember this point budget is derived from the french word bogot bogot is nothing but leather bag so pranam mukherjee used to follow what is the meaning of the budget exactly okay bogot means leather bag so i will carry the budget documents only in the leather bag that is what uh, he used to do but nirmala madam has given the budget presentation a indian look she generally uses a hand loom cloth okay that that is what he she call it as bahi khata this particular bag you are seeing no she calls it as bahi khata with the emblem of india at the center okay to in 2019 she made this change okay she did away with the traditional briefcase system leather briefcase system she stopped using that briefcase uh, after 2019 instead she started uh, using what bahi khata with the national emblem with the national emblem in the middle to carry the speech and other documents on a tablet computer so she also uses a tablet okay while presenting the budget this is all about the very important facts about nirmala sitaraman and the budget related aspects okay one more important change was also made one more important change in the budget was also made by the ex finance minister and he is also not there with us at this point of time that is arun jetli okay up to 2016 means 2014 15 16 3 years of bjp government okay and before that also before that also congress government okay since the time of independence till 2014 railway budget and general budget was presented separately okay was presented separately but after 2016 finance minister arun jetli decided to merge the railway budget with the union budget and the first merged only one budget was presented for the financial year 2017 18 so the merging of railway budget and uh, uh, union budget was done by arun jetli in the year uh, 2017 to 18 which was pre first presented as a combined budget and uh, the changing of uh, uh, budget bag from leather bag to a bahi khata was done after 2019 okay right chali we have to now see allocation criteria will see uh, in the next class okay because some more i need to add in that that is the reason allocation will do it the finance minister has told that uh, modi government is working very hard relentlessly to make india a vikshit bharat by 2047 as i have told you the four pillars of uh, uh, development that the government is focusing four pillars of development development the government is focusing is yuva means youth okay youth is nothing but according to government definition youth is nothing but 18 to 24 years age group is called as youth 
okay in some books you may find the higher but it will not be more than 30 okay 18 to 24 years is called as youth less than 18 you know that children right so 18 to 24 youth 24 to 59 years we call the person as adult so i come in the category of adult obviously okay maybe you are if you are preparing just after the graduation you are youth but 18 to 4, 24 years is youth now according to the government it is up to 30 but uh, some definitions are also like that so you are garib means poor those who are living in below poverty line mahila woman and annadata that is kisan at our farmer so nirmala madam has told that we are having four pillars and we have to develop the four pillars the four pillars are you are garib Mahilai and Anadatta that is farmer. Okay. Now let us see the vision of Viksit Bharat. See Taraman. Viksit Bharat means developed India. Okay. She said that our vision is to make India a prosperous. Means everyone should be prospering. Everyone should be able to fulfill the needs, wants slowly over a period of time. You are also able to purchase education. I also edu able to purchase education for my kids. You can also pay for your health services of your family. I can also pay for the health services of the family. You can also avail water services. I can also avail water services. You can also avail fridge cooler TV. I can also avail fridge cooler TV. You can also avail a two-wheeler. I can also avail a two-wheeler. If all of us are having all of this, then it means that we are moving towards a prosperous Bharat. That is what she said. Okay, Viksit Bharat is nothing but a prosperous Bharat in the harmony with the nature. And she said that we are not trying to delete the environmental conservation concept here. We are going to be a Viksit Bharat. We are going to develop, but in aligning with the nature. We were not going to destroy the nature at our will. And she said that modern infrastructure like metros, AI, okay, machine learning, all that modern infrastructure will be uh, created. Okay that will prove n number of employment opportunities to the people the next five years will be years of unprecedented development okay the golden moments to realize the dream of develop india by 2047 she said that the next five years is a very crucial and every one of you me every one of us will see a lot of money in our hands that is what she said she combined the trinity and said that democracy okay Hearing the people's voice from every corner of the country, from every part of the country, hearing the people's voice. Okay. Demography means all age groups we will concentrate. Whether infant, whether toddler, whether child, whether youth, whether woman. Okay. Whether it is a senior citizen or very senior citizen. So we will go with that demographical development also and diversity. Diversity is nothing but, okay, irrespective of religion, caste, race, tribe, birth, whatever it is. This trinity we will combine and we will try to develop Sabka Saat, Sabka uh, Vishwas, okay, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Saat, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, means everyone in the country will be heard, every age group will be developed, every community will be developed, okay, that will fulfill the aspirations of every Indian, being a Muslim, I also be, want to be prosperous, Prosperous is nothing but I also want to live in my own house. I am also, I, I should also able to fulfill my basic necessities of life. Right or wrong? Being a Hindu, you might have the same goal. Being a Jain, being a Buddhist, everyone has the same one. This is the all nothing but these are the aspiration of Indian citizen. Okay, to become prosperous. And she said that we will have it by 2047. Okay. That is a vision. Now let us see some important facts with regard to the evolution of budget since independence. James Wilson. The first person, a Scottish economist, okay, he was working with East India Company. Okay, this is our uh, world map. Here is the Europe and India is here, right? Okay, this is our world map. Europe is at the left side. For left side, Europe is there. We are here. So, as because India comes to the east of the east of the European countries, that's why they always call East India Company. Okay, just for the people who does not know, I just give the some clarif clarification with regard to why they are calling it as East India, why not North India, why not South India. Lot of students are there who comes with lot of these kind of doubts. Okay, but I believe that these doubts are very important for the persons to get into deeper understanding of what they are actually learning. James Wilson, a Scottish economist, okay, working with East India Company, presented the first interim budget in the year 1860 
आफ्टर एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन रिवॉल्व दे गॉट दैट माइंड ओके जब दिमाग आया उनको ओके इट इज एट अ टाइम दैट नो वी हैव टू प्रेजेंट द बजट एंड वी हैव टू शो टू द पीपल ऑफ द कंट्री दैट सी वी आर हैविंग दिस मच मनी वी आर स्पेंडिंग दिस मच मनी सो दैट वी विल काम डाउन वी विल नॉट रिवॉल्ट अदरवाइज इफ एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन रिवॉल्ट ऑल्सो इफ दे डोंट बेंड देर वेज वी वुड हैव गॉट द इंडिपेंडेंस लॉन्ग बैक this because they have bent their ways and the queen victoria came and said that okay the era of annexation era of domination will be over etc so and so forth so we just calm down at that time otherwise it has been a long case we got the independence okay then after the independence rk shanmukham chetty presented the india's first inaugural interim budget and in his budget he talked about food grain scarcity surging imports and rampant inflation Later on, what happened? Union Finance Minister Yashwan Sinha, in 2001, shifted the announcement time of the budget from 5 p.m. to 11 a.m. So British period is also called as colonial period, and British Parliament used to present a budget at 5 p.m. in the evening. So Yashwan Sinha, in the year 2001. has thought that why we have to continue a colonial practice let us not continue it so he has stopped presenting the budget at 5 pm started presenting the budget at 11 am see how the evolution has happened with regard to the budget okay till 2016 the budget used to be presented on the last day working day of the february okay and why the uh, prepotment of the budget did happen after that means i have told you in uh, indian economic series prelims ka mains uh, you will be having the static lectures there you will find this particular reason okay why the date has been prepoed okay in 2019 nirmala sitaraman madam has changed the budget uh, brief case to the bahi khata we know about it okay the move towards a paperless budget because of it happened during the because of the covid okay and also government want to go for a technology shift how many years we have to be carrying the papers when we can do that particular uh, in the uh, tablet itself right so that is the reason in order to save the paper in order to go for a technological shift the budget has been also been carried out by carried out by the nirmala madam in a tablet finance minister nirmala madam has delivered the longest budget speech in the history in 2020 two hours 42 minutes the speech however fell short of former prime minister manmohan singh okay word count record okay so manmohan singh has uh, our ex uh, pm and the, uh, the very renowned finance minister he has also given a budget speech but his budget speech may be less number in time less amount in time but number of words he has spoken a, a lot nirmala madam has taken more time but less words with this you can understand that who is a better economist less time more information is a better economics more time less information so there is no comparison between the finance minister pm and this um, ex pm uh, manmohan singh and the finance minister of present in 1950 the union budget was leaked during finance minister john mathai's tenure okay so after 1980 the budget printing process was moved from rashtrapati bhavan to minto road morley minto morley reforms are there no okay 1909 Mildo, Minto Morley reforms you might have heard no? on that particular viceroy a road is also there in delhi that is minto road the shift to bilingual presentation occurred in 1955 to 56 so within first tenure term only jawala nehru thought that why we should use only english so hindi and english bilingual budget uh, documents has been printed both in english and hindi okay now let us see what uh, madam has told 10 important major announcement okay major announcement made by the finance minister in the interim budget first of all she said that under pra pradhan mantri awas awas means nothing but home under pradhan mantri awas yojana 2 crore more households will be built that is what she said housing for middle class you and me for as a middle class housing scheme will be launched by the government if anybody is installing rooftop uh, solar power panels okay they will be getting free 300 units of electricity and announcement of target for lakpati didi self help groups everyone should become lakpati preparing and empowering msme to grow and compete globally so government will push the msme like matchbox like candles like small toys are there no these are called as msme industry tiktok lights these are called as msme industry government want to push this uh, industries and uh, help them to 
help them with regard to finance, with regard to technology. So their products can also sell in Dubai market, UK market and compete with their local products. Attention to the eastern region like Bihar, Odisha, Jharkhand, West Bengal and Chhattisgarh. Very, very, very important points. Please remember this. They will ask you in the MCQ, which one of the following states has given special priority in the budget, interim budget 2024. These are the eastern states, Bihar, Odisha, Jharkhand. West Bengal, Chhattisgarh. Next generation reforms to be carried out means a very big new reforms may come in future if the government comes to power in the July 2024. Three major corridors will be there. Okay, plus four, plus 40,000 coaches bought to be a level of one day Bharat. 40,000 coaches trains will be bought to be under one day Bharat. Urbanization regarding this, looking at Metro and Namo Bharat. One more train, Namo Bharat. And metros will be coming in cities like we also Hyderabad Metro, Mumbai Metro, Delhi Metro like that. Metros are given important. Namo Bharat trains may come in future. One lakh crore corpus is given for research and innovations. Research and innovation is the backbone of the development of any country. That's why one lakh crore will be given to it. Uh, that's one lakh crore will be distributed to all research organizations like Indian Institute of Science, IITs, IIMs, Baba Atomic Research Centers, ISRO. This one lakh crore will be given to public and private people to go for research and innovations. And government is obviously trying to boost what? Tourism. Okay. So what are the guiding factors that has led to the presented presentation of this interim budget and also to lay a foundation for the Viksit Bharat in 2047? Nirmala Sita Raman Madam has highlighted some key factors that are guiding this government with, with respect to what development. First one is in society justice should be there means all the caste, all the creeds, all the tribes, all the religion, okay, men, women, children, everyone. In society, government is towards looking towards social justice, nothing but inclusive development. Government is em emphasizing. Okay, so social justice should be there with effective and necessary governance. Means laws will be there, policies will be there, schemes will be carried out by the government in order to make sure that social justice is given to the society with effectiveness. Four major groups are the guiding factors of the government's model of development that is youth, poor women, and farmers. Focus on infrastructure, you might be aware of this fact, fact that from last 3-4 years government of uh, present BJP government is basically focusing on capex, capex, capital expenditure they are concentrating, massive increase happen in capex expenditure. Okay, continuing the uh, trend for the last 4 years, using of technology as a huge opportunity whereas it is artificial intelligence, whereas it is cyber security, whereas it is bitcoin, blockchain technology, whatsoever it is using of technology has been given importance high power committee for extensive consideration of challenges arising from population growth so population growth need to be cut down in order to make the india develop because the more the population the resources burden will be more and we cannot channelize the resources to any other developmental activities okay the same resources will be again used for the basic uh, for provision of basic mnts that is the reason Population growth, how to stop it, what could be the formula, hum do, hamare do is right, ya hum do, hamara ek is right. Okay, what kind of uh, principles should be there in order to govern the population growth? A high power committee has also been find, uh, formed which will give us recommendations in future. Okay. As I have told you that uh, Nirmala Madam, while presenting the budget, has uh, given some achievements with regard to her government. Let us see what it is. She said that the direct transfer, benefit transfer, program DBT direct benefit transfer this was launched by uh, Manmohan Singh government Congress government directly the benefit will be transferred into your account means if I, I, I avail education loan the benefit will be directly coming to my account I, I don't have to go to education department or education office okay in order to avail a check from it no need for it for everything whether it is subsidy whether it is government pension whatever it is the benefit will be directly transferred to the individuals with the help of that government can uh, what reduce the leakages and also the corruption practices so dbt model is one such mechanism okay reduces corrupt practices and has become a game changer because here the person need not give any bribe to the officials to get the uh, to get his benefit passed so till now okay it has almost saved around 2.7 lakh crore rupees she said that 25 crore people have risen above multi-dimensional poverty and she also said that in 2013 to 14 okay 
multi-dimensional poverty in our country was 29.2% during the Congress government she was talking about in 2013 to 14 multi-dimensional poverty poverty was 29.3 but after the Modi government has come by 2022 to 2023 MDPI has reduced to 11.3 percent that is what she said in the uh, budget okay PM Swanidhi a scheme for credit assurance scheme for the street vendors like Pani Puri Walas like mechanics like uh, banana sellers like any small uh, thelas will be there no that particular uh, people will be benefited under this Swani this scheme nothing but a street vendor scheme micro credit will be given, given small small loans will be given till now under this scheme 78 lakh street vendors are empowered and were given what micro credit it is a central sector scheme fully funded by the ministry of housing and urban affairs remember this point the ministry who actually runs this particular scheme ministry of housing and urban affairs implements Swani this scheme has objective to facilitate working capital loan up to 10,000. 10,000 rupees will be given nothing but micro small credit will be given to them. Incentives will be given regular payment if they are paying the EMIs on time they may get the interest back okay and uh, reward digital transaction if the merchants and all of these street vendors like Pani Puriwalas etc if they are using UPI transactions more or digital transaction more they will be rewarded again. It has still not brought change to 78 lakh families. This particular scheme has benefited to almost like 78 lakh families and they got little more money in their lives and they are living little bit better than previously. Okay. PM Avas Yojana Grameen. Over 70% of houses under this particular scheme were given to the women. So women empowerment component is also given here. So PM Avas Yojana 70% of the houses will be given in the name of the women from rural areas. Despite COVID challenges, the target of 3 crore houses under PM Avas Yojana will be achieved soon. So, Madam promised 3 years back that uh, 3 crore houses will be built and they are still in the construction period only. She said that that will be done very soon. 2 more crore houses, 2 crore more houses will be taken up in the next 5 years, she said. Average real income has increased by 50%. Like your income, my income, average income of all of us has increased by 50%. Means... When Modi government came, we might be earning 100 rupees. Now, we are earning 150 rupees. Means 50% increase happen in all of us income like that she said. Inflation is moderate, not too high. Okay. PM Vishwakarma Yojana. Okay. It provides end-to-end -end support to artisans. Okay. While scheme to empower the divyang disabled people and the transgender persons prove that this government believes in leaving no one behind. So considering the new genders that we have in our country like transgenders are there, LGBT community is also coming up, rising up in our uh, localities, in our country, in our society, okay. And also the disabled people also there. Government is saying that we are not just concentrating on women, poor, uh, women, poor, youth and farmers. We also see that we also have other categories of people who are basically deprived, nothing but handicapped. Okay, we can say that the young and also the transgender. So we are helping them under a scheme called as PM Vishwakarma scheme. So basically government is saying that we are not leaving any person behind. We are not leaving any group behind. We are not leaving any community behind. Our government is as simple as that. Sabka saath, sabka vikas, sabka vishwas. Okay, right. So there's a qualitative aspect about uh, the part one has been completed. Tomorrow we'll see the allocations. In the, not tomorrow, next part we'll see the allocations, we'll see all the numbers and whenever uh, the, there is a scheme is there, that the scheme details also I will put because this is a detailed lecture. After that, we'll complete separately like agriculture budget, education budget, health budget. So we'll try to analyze each component of our economics various sectors and we'll master the budget 2024 like no way. Okay, thank you for watching me.